Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Sunday morning service. We're so grateful that you're here today, wherever you may be, here in the, in the sanctuary at home, watching on your giant 100-inch TV screen or, or your phone. Either way, we're going to begin our service today. It's very special. We're, our opening chant is We Are the Harvest, and we have the composer here, Jamie Lula, who's going to help, help us lead it as we all sing it together. So here we go. done. Good morning. What a treat to have Jamie with us to lead us in our opening song. Welcome, welcome, welcome on this gorgeous Sunday. It's Marathon Sunday. It is the spring equinox and it is just a day that we are delighted to be together here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. Thank you for being here in person. Thank you for being here on Facebook and on Zoom. And with that, let us just take a deep breath in and just do a little prayer. <sighs> Remembering to turn all cell phones off. And that is prayer enough. However, <laughs> however, let us just breathe the giggles out of ourselves right here and right now. <sighs> Feeling that presence of spirit, that presence, that infinite presence of love that surrounds this sanctuary and works through each and every single one of us, in us, as us, and through us, as we are all unique divine expressions of that one mind, separate in physical form, but one in the mind of spirit. I know this service is absolutely divinely blessed, that we are graced with the energy of each other, with the energy of this absolutely beautiful music provided by our dear Jamie Lula, and of course, Sam, and of course, Karen. We are so delighted for this beautiful music that 
they share with us. We are so grateful for the divine wisdom of our beautiful Reverend Sydney, knowing that spirit flows through and works through Reverend Sydney so that each and every one of us today, we hear exactly what we need. And in that listening and taking it within, whatever we need to embrace is done so with grace and ease. And whatever needs to be released or let go of is simply done in absolute beautiful perfection, knowing that spirit works in absolute accordance with all of our highest good in mind at all times. I bless this time together. I bless every single one of us. And I simply know that this time together serves us and serves everyone that we come in contact with throughout the rest of our week until we meet again. And so I simply release my word into law, knowing it is done, and on the unseen side of life, all unfolds perfectly as it was, as it is in this moment, and as it ever shall be. And so it is, and together we say, Amen. So I invite us all just to stand together for a moment and join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread as we forgive those who trespass, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, let's continue standing while we all sing our congregational song, Amazing Grace.
Now we're going to meditate together for just about five minutes. So I just invite all of us to take a deep breath and just settle into our bodies.
seems like a harmony Pure perfection has begun Shining like a midnight sun Out of darkness I have come I see God in everyone Let me be an instrument Guided by an heaven sent May these grapes of pain ferment Alchemized to love's content Ever be a sacrament Knowing God is my intent God, let me know your name Hold me in the same breath As your word How you astound me with your grace. so much easier to come up and do a talk after someone like Jamie speaks because everybody's going, oh, yes, 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 and I can pretend I'm getting the standing ovation. <laughs> but 
that was just gorgeous. Just gorgeous. Oh my goodness. Well, aloha. aloha. <laughs> I've been gone for 10 days and it's been lovely. I missed you all, but we were on a snorkeling retreat in Hawaii, <laughs> if there is such a thing. And it was just wonderful. And it informed the title of my talk as I was, um, as we were on a, a ferry going from Maui to Lanai um, a few days ago. And I thought, wow, I'm so blissed out. I feel so transformed and so, so elevated. I will call this talk trauma drama, or the Dalai Lama. Because <laughs> I was so in that Dalai Lama place, it was fabulous. And you know, this gift, that new thought, and science of mind, centers for spiritual living, unity, divine science, Course in Miracles, all of these things fall under the umbrella of new thought. And the gift that new thought offers us is the immediacy and the premacy of our own participation. We realize that we have not just the capacity to participate and partner with God, but we have the agency and the responsibility. And that means we have agency and responsibility for our choices, our beliefs, our thinkings, our, our thinking rather in our habitual, habitual practices. I, I have to practice talking again. I've had a snorkel in my mouth for 10 days. Ernest Holmes wrote that that which distinguishes the new thought from the old is not a denial of divine reality, but an affirmation of its immediate availability. It's an affirmation of its immediate availability, that reality with a capital R. Reality with a capital R. So having agency, this idea of agency is huge. If we had choice but no results, or abilities without rewards, then life would be very static. But what we teach is that we are partners and participants here with God, with spiritual principle. And what we know is that choosing how we think is ultimately what creates the quality of our lives. So it's the thinking. It's the thinking. So now Emmett Fox wrote this, and I really like it. Emmett Fox was iconic to the unity movement. He was also ordained by, believe it or not, um, Norman Vincent Peale many years ago, came into unity and was embraced as, 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 a, as a light for that teaching. And we embrace him as well. And he wrote, the universe is run exactly on the lines of a cafeteria. Unless you claim mentally what you want, you may sit and wait forever. Now, if you've come from a, a history of orthodoxy, that might be a little bit challenging to, to take in. I just want to invite you to suspend all ideas from the past, all old beliefs, any of that, and just be in this and allow yourself the possibility that this might be true and might work. Because we have the ability and, yes, the responsibility to claim, we can also choose to claim blessings in the midst of suffering or peace in the midst of war. Now, there's a Buddhist teaching that's very powerful and says that even in the midst of darkness, the light is present. Even in the midst of darkness, the light is present. And I love that's what Jamie's song was talking about, to be that light, to be that light. Even in the midst of darkness, there's light. It's still present. When you and I cannot see wholeness, the wholeness is still there. When you and I cannot remember that there's something bigger than God going on, than a divine presence whose center is everywhere and circumference is nowhere, it is still active. It is still present. It is still completely there. And as we recognize it, we get to be informed by it. But how does this look for us when we can't see that light or that wholeness or God? You know, is there a tool or a practice that we can access like that when we really need to, when we need to shift the trajectory of our thinking or our fear. There's a country song that came to mind as I was working on this talk, and it's called God Bless the Broken Road. And it's the words, the chorus goes like this. Every long lost dream led me to where you are. 
Others who broke my heart were like northern stars, pointing me on my way into your loving arms. This much I know is true, that God blessed the broken road that led me straight to you. Now, did you know that God isn't the only one who has the agency, the ability, the qualifications, the power, the licensing, if you will, to bless you and I all have that. You and I are all qualified. We're licensed to bless. You were licensed to bless. You have the license to bless. And I encourage you to use that tool. Because what we, what we are doing when we bless is we are inviting our own inner light, our own namaste self, our Christ self, our Buddha self, whatever you choose to call it, to remember and to connect with and to call forth that same divine innate wonderful wisdom that love in someone else or in a situation so blessing is powerful because it doesn't just remind us who we are but it reminds us who everybody else is too and when two or more are gathered in a consciousness of love when two or more are recognizing love even if it's at that divine level and not on the conscious doing business level life can shift life will change there is power in that our giving forth that energy and that power of blessing, is, it's a superpower, except that we all have it. It's not restricted to, to cartoon characters. We all have that ability. Of Course in Miracles says, only what you have not given can be lacking in any situation. It doesn't say it exactly that way, but the teaching is that if you find yourself in a situation and, and you're thinking, wow, there seems to be a lack of love here, it's because you're not giving it. There seems to be a lack of peace or poison. It's because you're not giving it. When we find ourselves in an experience where, where we realize, hey, someone's being a real jerk here, the problem isn't the jerk. The problem is that you and I identified the jerkiness and neglected to respond as the presence of love, the truth of God. We neglected to respond in compassion or patience or forgiveness or peace. We neglected to do that. We saw it and we ignored it. So as we identify it, and this is what I think about that, when we identify a situation where there's, or rather we're in a situation where we identify that this is uncomfortable or there's anger here or there's frustration or there's judgment or there's meanness or there's snark, whatever it is, if we have identified it, it's because there's that within us that is saying, hey, time for you to align. You know better. It's like having a gift and not taking it out of the box. Take it out of the box. Be that. Be that peace. Be that poise. Be that forgiveness. Be that patience, that compassion. That's what you are here to do. And as we know in this teaching, we create with our thinking. So if we can come back to aligning with that divine truth of who and what we are, the truth of God, which is love, then we get to, once again, partner with God. We are part of that participation with spiritual principle and that we are the channels for a higher expression of love. Does that make sense? Am I? Okay, good. So at any time, that which we believe ourselves and know ourselves to be can transform the energy and the outcome of an entire exchange. Now, it can work the other way too. It can work the other way too. If we think we are less than whole, if we think that we are part of... Um, well, let me just put it this way. I have a really strong gift for assessing somebody else's, somebody else's spirituality. Okay, that was supposed to be a joke. Let me say it another way. <laughs> I, am, I am really good at judging whether or not you are spiritual and you're using your gifts. How's that? Is that better? Yeah. That is not a superpower, by the way. That is not something that I should cultivate. But we all have this gift of being able to judge somebody else's Enlightened, state of enlightenment, right? So we can contribute to the transformation of something into a high place, or we contribute to a lower place. We can contribute to the trauma, we can amplify the drama, or we can choose to remember our own inner Dalai Lama. I bet you wondered how I was going to get there, right? <laughs> So Raymond Charles Barker, who was one of the wonderful writers for um, this teaching, wrote in The Science of Successful Living, 
Too many hold the mask of their ego before the mirror and see only the injustices that are perpetuated, being perpetuated upon them. They refuse, refuse to see what they themselves are doing with life. Circumstances beyond your control may place you in a situation that seemingly defeats you both mentally and emotionally, but with this understanding, you need not remain in that predicament. In other words, you need not remain in that consciousness. You are not... Okay, let's get the pages in order. La, 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 la. Doesn't matter. What did I do here? <laughs> this is fun, isn't it? Okay, well, if we can't hide it, we paint it red. So there it is. <laughs> you are not the victims of circumstance, heredity, nor environment. You are in a universe of subconscious intelligence that must must respond to your conscious demand. Remember the claim in the cafeteria? You are a thinking, feeling center in the universal field of mind and emotion. You can always, always, always produce new streams of consciousness. And this is what our response can be to that which is trauma. There is big trauma. I understand that. There can be very big collective trauma. I understand that as well. And... I think for many of us, we choose to keep traumatizing ourselves by continuing to define ourselves according to that which happened, according to that which took us out of the game, according to that which hurt us, according to that which might be hurting the world. Now, when we do that, we have moved officially into the realm of drama. The definition of trauma, and there's a big difference between trauma and drama. Trauma is any type of distressing event or experience that can have an impact on a person's ability to cope and function. Now, the spectrum on what that looks like goes far beyond what I can go, get into on a 20-minute talk on a Sunday. But what I want to say is regardless of what has gone on, regardless what you and I have gone through or experienced in our lives, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, because we are more than that. We are more than our dramas, we are more than our traumas, we are more than our episodes, our experiences, our pain, our suffering, we are more than that. We do not have to be identified by that, defined by it. We don't have to identify as our histories. We really don't. You know, it's really interesting, most people, when you meet them, they'll tell you about their histories. They'll tell you about their wounds and their histories. We don't have to do that. We can understand that that broken road brought us to that moment right here and right now. And there's something about that concept of the broken road that's so profound. Those breaks are where we grow. Those breaks are where we grow closer to God. Those breaks are where we, we allow for the awareness of who we are and what our connection, what our our divinity really is. You know, Rumi said it, Leonard Cohen said it, that the, the cracks, that's where the light gets in. And if that road had been straight and perfect and smooth, where's the light? So it is in that growing. It is in the, the sand that gets in the oyster and creates that pearl. It is that friction that allows us, that invites us to be more and to know that we are more. So... I have to say that, speaking for myself, I can say with certainty that it is because of those broken roads that I am here, that I keep coming back here, that I use these teachings, that these teachings work for me. And it has given me an interesting perspective because I see people, and I know you probably see them too, no one here that will often hold up the list of their struggles as, as like a list of accomplishments. Um, they're like trophies or medals or certificates. Um, Certificates of award for surviving it. You know, this, they made it through this arduous journey of this thing called sucky life, right? So relationships are good for this. And again, no one here, but you might have war wounds or you might know someone who's got war wounds or citations of valor for this. Here's one. I got this emotional scar from this guy who never called. I have trust issues because of this woman who was immature and unreliable. My problems with intimacy come from my ex who never got along with his ex. <laughs> What's so fascinating about all of those statements is that it means we're defining ourselves according to someone else and to a past history instead of the current reality of the here and now. The thing is 
they have current reality because if we are repeating them and we are thinking them and we are thinking them, we are thinking them and we are attending them, giving them our attention, that means we are attaching to them and we are giving them our energy, yes, they are creating a current reality. Second verse, same as the first, a little bit louder, a little bit worse, right? Okay, but can you imagine how different our relationships would be if instead our conversations were more along the lines of, I'm free from emotional scars because I stopped trying to make someone else change in order to make me happy. Or I'm really good, really good when it comes to trust and relationships because I understand that trust comes from within and not from how other people behave. Okay. Or I only involve myself with people who are respectful and emotionally healthy. So I don't use intimacy as a weapon or for manipulation. Oh my God. You know, a life without high levels of drama and rage may seem a little boring, but around here, we call that balance. We call it wisdom. You know, it's one thing when we suffer deep, deep emotional abuse or trauma because of events or the stuff that has seemingly been visited upon us, but it's quite another thing when we do traumatize ourselves repeatedly by embracing the drama around that instead of peace, instead of peace. The drama comes when we interpret ourselves according to our suffering, according to our limits. The drama comes when we see ourselves as identified with and by that which has happened. Again, from Raymond Charles Barker, the salvation of the world is not locked in a theology. It rests in the fact that any human being can change for the better, and that includes you and me. There's another author I really like. Her name is Bell Hooks, and she wrote this. How do we hold people accountable for wrongdoing and yet at the same time remain in touch with their humanity enough to believe in their capacity to be transformed? Now that's, that's strong. That really got me because it's so deeply personal. How do we hold others and ourselves accountable and yet stay fully, fully aware and connected with our humanity, with their humanity, enough to know that yes, we can bless them, call forth the divine from us to engage with the divine in them so that transformation can occur, so that the world indeed can be lifted up. Is it possible for us to stand in a place of compassion and forgiveness in the midst of trauma, both in ourselves and others, in the world, and to remember our collective fundamental divinity? Is it possible to do that? But wait, let me trigger you with this one. Can we be clear that as we look at what is happening in Ukraine right now, that our role, our divine assignment is to serve the highest ideas of love, peace, service, and wholeness for every single person touched by what's happening? Are we willing to do that? Are we willing to do that for all of those, take a breath, that we all label evil or as enemies? Are we willing to do that even for Vladimir Putin? Are we willing to bless and to call forth? No healing has ever been achieved through cursing the darkness. Healing happens when we praise, when we support, and when we promote the light. In fact, if you really want to stand in your own power, and this will trigger you definitely, try this little phrase on for size. Everything in my life I either create, promote, or allow. Everything in my life, I either create, promote, or allow. Healing and transform transformation happen when we bless, when we call forth that divine presence. <sighs> we aren't saying that we agree with them or that we are supporting what they're doing. Blessing means we are agreeing with God, that we are in agreement with God. I know that bypass is a bad word in spiritual communities, but it means we bypass the evidence the, the effect and go directly to God and agree with God, the greater, the greater. We go beyond the deck chairs on the, of the Titanic and we go into that presence. We go into that greater immediacy that is God. Ernest Holmes wrote, we have thought of God and likened, and Ernest Holmes, by the way, if you're new, is the founder of this teaching. 
He was a pretty smart guy. We have thought of God and likened God to what we would be if we were God. <laughs> we have created God in our own image. We would get mad for one thing and then everybody would have to pay, right? If I were God. Um, if I were God, we'd be, or if we were God, we'd be pleased and everything would be nice for a while. Then we would fight a while with everybody who didn't agree with us. Do you think that God fights in or for or over or against or about or around anything? Of course not. There is no God of war. And here's something else he said. We are not praying to slay anybody. We are not fighting the people of any particular country. We are fighting the false thought that manifests through a government and that it will be destroyed and its embodiment will go with it. We are arguing for the agreement with God. We are intending to be in such agreement with God that everything else, everything else is dissolved in the light of that. That is the high truth. That is the high truth. There's no such thing as a God of struggle and war. All such ideas are old and untrue. These ideas find our way into our literature, our art, more or less in everything. So when something happens which disturbs, which hurts or takes us out, we can transform and heal or we can sustain and nurture and promote our suffering and struggle and create more of it with our drama. Now, I'll admit, drama can seem like it's a lot more fun. It's a lot more fun. It energizes, it excites, it gets your adrenaline and your cortisol flowing. But those are also the same pathologies that show up when we're in fear or fight or flight mode, right? That doesn't mean we're more alive. It just means that our blood pressure has gone up. Every now and again, it's good to check in with yourself. If you hear yourself saying, wow, I feel so alive, make sure, ask yourself if it's because of actual aliveness or your need for drama. <laughs> right? This, this, oh my God, I'm so alive. That's not inspiration. That's adrenaline. This, I feel so alive. That's God. That's inspiration. That's flow. So now the Dalai Lama isn't sexy. I'll be the first to admit it. But the energy which will transform our world and save the planet will not be the drama of, drama of any sexy whining and complaining. So, you know, the thing is, sometimes I will choose a talk title and think, well, that's pretty neutral. I can, I can get on with that without having to live out the experience. Oh, no, 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 no. You know, this, I thought when I came up with this title, I was, I'm so clever. Sydney, you're so clever. So we were very Dalai Lama on the whole trip. Swimming, snorkeling, eating good food, watching the sunsets, reading, resting. We were very Dalai Lama-ish. And then Friday night, Coming home, we flew into LAX. <laughs> and apparently my inner Dalai Lama stayed on the plane. <laughs> Remember what I said about only what you have not given is lacking in this situation? Well, apparently I thought that the situations we were in, which was like walking a good 20 minutes to go from the, the, the plane to baggage, which is fine. It's a brand new terminal. It was beautiful. It's actually gorgeous. Um, but then having to find the luggage and then, oh, by the way, trying to find the sign, the shut, with, okay, they're in the midst of construction. <laughs> they have two places in the airport to catch a hotel shuttle or a parking shuttle back to where you're parked. The signs are two feet tall, 18 inches wide. Two in the whole terminal. Oh, they're red. That's good. But they're buried in the construction. The only ones who can see them are the people driving, not the people who need to stand by the signs. That's not good. So there we were, because apparently I was thinking only that which is lacking in any situations because I haven't brought it. So I decided the situation needed my judgment, it needed my pain, it needed my snark, it needed my profanity, of which I had a lot. It brought, I brought in my anger because I thought everybody needed to be traumatized by my drama. I was really, really on. I'm not proud. But here I am, from fresh from a trip from paradise and feeling oh so very omi. Oh Oh, so very Dal Dalai Lama-ish, and 
The Dalai Lama doesn't apparently do shuttles. <laughs> so I wasn't channeling him. I was channeling Rasputin, Attila the Hun, Genghis Khan. It did not go well. Seeking redemption when we finally got home, in fact, got to bed, which was like 3.30 in the morning yesterday, I found two quotes from The Course in Miracles that really made me laugh hysterically. Only infinite patience produces immediate effects. Oh, crap. <laughs> and the other one, heaven is not a place or a condition. It is merely an awareness of perfect oneness. Well, practice makes progress. Let's pray. <laughs> so we just simply turn inward, recognizing that in the midst, in the midst of all that appears to be unlike God, God is still the center. God is still present. God is still active and expressing as light, as love as peace. And we choose now to invoke an awareness of that in all that we do, all that we say, all that we move through in life. We choose together to know that as we recognize God, God recognizes us and the light shines bright. We remember who and what we are. We are the divine. We are that power. We are that presence. And truly in any situation, we Remember to bring the God. We bring the God. We bring the light. We bring the knowing. We bring that higher awareness, that power that we have to bless and to transform ourselves and, yes, indeed, this entire planet. This love that we are is inexhaustible. This presence that we are is unassailable. This truth by which we live is undeniable. It will not be blocked. It will not be denied. And it will not be stopped by anyone or anything, including ourselves. So I know for us now that we move through any of those apparent thoughts or judgments which seem to have clouded our vision because now the lights are on within ourselves and in the world. So we are able to move into our world, our days, our lives, and to be that blessing and to remember to bless. And I know truly that we are a blessing. We are a blessing to our families, to our own lives, to our careers, to the traffic on the 405. We are absolutely the light that shines. And I know that we are able to call forth any situation right now that might be hanging out on the edges of our mind or right in the center of it, causing this concern or fear or anguish. And we know that God is active right there, that God is present right there, that right where that situation is, those people are where we are, God is there oh, and all is well. So I bless this church. I bless all churches. I bless all synagogues, ashrams, all mosques, all airline terminals, all shuttles, and I know that all of them are ultimately ah, paths to greater awareness, paths to love, paths to God. How wonderful, how wonderful to know that and to know that together we are right where God is and all is well. So with a great sense of gratitude, of joy, of knowing, of acceptance, I release this word into spiritual law, knowing it is already so, and so it is, and together we say, amen. We will sing this one time. I am so
I invite you to take your offering in your hand and to that knowing of that offering, that abundance that you have, whether you drop it in the box on your way out or you send it in or you email it or whatever you do, know that it is right here and right now here, part of who you are. And say with me, from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and it returns to me multiplied abundantly. And so it is. Made mistakes, it's true. The ignorance of youth. I dropped a bomb or two. I drank a bit of brew. I've seen what I've been told. Cause I've been bought and sold. I'm worth more than gold. It's time to break the mold. A flower never fails to make me breathe A river's always seeking out the sea A mountain climbs as high as it can be And everything's always reflecting me And everything's always reflecting me I cheated, lied, and stole But nothing left me whole a corrupted soul on a downward roll if they're not to be I've wasted most of me now I'm surrendering to what I'm here to be a flower never fails to make me breathe
And everything's always reflecting me A flower never fails to make me breathe A river's always sinking out the sea Mountain climbs as high as it can be And everything's always reflecting me And everything's always reflecting me And everything's always reflecting Wow, that was great. Jamie, thank you so much for being here. If you want to support Jamie, you can go to jamielula.com. Um, I think you'll not just be supporting him, but you'll be supporting your own consciousness by listening to Jamie's music anytime. So, thank you. And let's love up our band. Sam, Karen, woohoo! We're so blessed at this church. Okay, lots of stuff to, uh, to tell you about on this beautiful March 20th. Um, if it's your first time at our church, we're delighted you are here and you can uh, stop by the patio and pick up a welcome packet. Um, lots of information in it just for you. Um, for all the ways you can make donations to our church, please go to nhcrs.org forward slash give. Um, we also have prayer with a practitioner every service and it is available after service in person and also on Zoom. Wednesday evening service with Reverend Sidney Steen uh, right here. Meditation at 6.50, services at 7 o'clock. Join Reverend Sidney this week as she and her spiritual big sister, retired CSL minister, um, Reverend Diane um, Borsikowski. Borsikowski. Borsikowski, Reverend Diane Borsikowski, present Stump the Ministers. That has me interested. <laughs> exactly. Join in the fun as you, the congregation, try to stymie, stupefy, and stump both these wisdom teachers in a game of knowledge and random chaos, sure to have you laughing and learning. But please, as with all of our services, no wagering. Well, maybe just a little during the lightning round. Oh, we have got to see this. Okay, Feeding the Homeless, our love and kindness ministry will feed, be feeding the homeless today at 12.30 p.m. To support this ministry, go to the website. Volunteers and donations are always welcome. There's a new class, Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life, with Reverend Sidney Steam. You're busy, girl. The five-week class starts this Tuesday, March 22nd, in person and on Zoom. Don't miss out on this brand new exciting class. You'll learn how to apply science of mind, principles, practices, and methods to transform your life in areas of relationships, prosperity, and health. What could be better than that? Everyone is welcome. Sign up on our website. The cost is $170, and this cl uh, class counts toward practitioner training. On April 15th, tax day, we will have a Good Friday service followed by a fundraising dinner. Um, WWJE. What would Jesus eat? A delicious four course Middle Eastern dinner. That's not what I would have said. Um, entertainment by Tina Meeks, yes. And tickets for the dinner are $35 and are available on our website. On Easter Sunday, April 17th, we're going to have an Easter, the, the egg hunt for our youth on the church lawn, lawn. It immediately follows the 9.45 a.m. service. If you want to donate plastic-filled eggs, bring them to the office. Thank you in advance. Trust me, do not be late for this. It lasts 17 seconds, maybe. If you blink, you've missed it, and those kids are on fire with sugar, and I think there's quarters in some of them. So, and it's funny because the adults, you know, that they're sitting there wanting, they want to get involved and like beat the kids out because they want to do it too. So, that, but it's for kids only, kids only. I digress. Zoom virtual patio before and after Sunday and Wednesday services. Zoom meditation every morning, Monday through Saturday from 7.55 to 8.15 a.m. So you can meditate every single day. There's an opportunity if you need to have community in order to get your butt in the seat. So 
Visit our website, nhcrs.org, to obtain Zoom links and more information about all our events and to sign up for weekly e-blasts blasts, and monthly newsletters. I think I've said it all, and I think it's time for us to sing the peace song. Is it? I believe it is. Let's all stand and join. in truth. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I release all fear. I am living love. I am living love. Have a blessed week. Join me on the panel.